can have a we'll have a little we'll have a little session here. We'll see who comes in soon. So uh, yeah, man, we're um, I'm trying to get a, some pictures for everybody. So we, we have Adrian. We have advanced strategies coming in. Very good. Good to see you, Greg. Good to see you, Peter Timbis. So Peter said it, it's not a not a nice day in Florida. That's very dreary. Where are you at? Um, yeah, where are you, Peter? I'm uh, about an hour north of Orlando. Is that the village? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, you're, are you in Florida, Greg? Yeah, I'm in West Palm Beach. Okay. That's where you live? Mm-hmm. Okay. How's the weather down there? Hot and sunny. Okay. Yeah, it's been hot here. I'm going to show mm -hmm. you what it looks like. What the heck is that action? What did that do? All right, hold on. I'm running. I'm going to show everybody where I am right now. Now, it looks like I'm in my office, doesn't it, Greg? It really does. It really does. But I'm really it's, not. It's remarkable. Hang on a second, Rafa. There we go. It's pretty cool, Dave. Hey, man. <laughs> and you're re you need to rename yourself, Irene. Oh, I know yeah. that's not Irene. Uh, so you were you were me yesterday, so you're getting linked yeah. from everybody. <laughs> I'm undercover. I'm undercover brother here. So this good morning, this, doctor. Good morning. Boom, boom. That's where I am right now. Yeah, very nice. And, and this is what this is. Now this is not something you see every day in Florida, right here. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, David, did you come across the transportation station out there? A transportation station? I don't know what that means. You ever watch Yellowstone? The yeah. <laughs> the oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, that's a train <laughs> station. Oh, the train station. <laughs> yeah. I'll take you, you to the train the, station. The train yep. station? Yeah. That, that, hey, I, come, they, I want to know where that is. Again? Uh, hang on a sec. I will. Let me. Can uh, I turn my camera on? There we go. You can. You can, I think. Hang on, man. I'm I'm running off this other computers. There's that one, and there's there's the 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 bison. So the funny. So yesterday we went uh, riding on a um, we went horseback riding, and it was only supposed to be an hour ride. I was ready to be off the horse in about 15 minutes, but we actually were on the horse for two hours because we went riding, and the 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 handlers, whatever, what do we call those? The 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 people to help you. They're riding. There was a there's a bison that wound up charging one of the one of the um, one of the riders, and so uh, we had to take a different route. So there you go. Don't mess around with bison in Yellowstone. That's the oh, rule. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the question of the day is, what's your one word? Put it. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. I don't say anything. Don't put anything in chat because I didn't do it right yet. Hold on. I have to make it right. I think everybody goes to everyone, and I go to everyone as well. All right. So what is your one word? For doing business with the federal government, I have a whole bunch of people that responded this this past um, uh, as they were registering this time, and I'm going to pull this up because there's a couple in here that are really good. So I'm let me see if I can do this without showing everybody everything. All right, so so Car Carola, we got a question from Carola in a few minutes. As a matter of fact, she says impossible. <laughs> uh, Terrence says complex. Kevin says collaborative. Tom says growing. Christy says important. Maria says potential. Love that one. That's a positive. Uh, Joe says cumbersome. Never heard that before. Huh, Greg Clark? No, that's hard to believe. <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> Hang on a second there, Irene. I got to elevate you to uh, to co-host status so that you can share your, your lovely picture. Thank you. So there you go. So uh, And then we also have um, Nick says still learning. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger says says uh, i gotta look at this better uh opportunities love that one mm -hmm. harlan says confusing and rosie how about this one uh rafa this is great for you not always transparent <laughs> <laughs> no way no way no. rosie no, no I, way. I i cannot believe this yeah that's hard Dave, to i can't i can't see the uh the, the responses in chat My, yeah chat i can't looks, either looks to me. Yeah. i can't see him hold on a second i probably made something wrong speaking of being what? transparent <laughs> Well, David, being David, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one sentence for all the participants. Let's make your life very easy 
with visiting the doctor. And I don't mean your medical doctor. I mean the doctor on this panel. He'll make your doctor. life so much easier getting into the federal government arena. Look at that. Getting the plug right out of the gate. Hey. Oh, the that's doctor. beautiful. Getting the doctor. Beautiful. All right. So I, 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 I just tested and I went I to everyone, right? Yeah, yep. I see it. All right, so Rob is, maybe, is just the host and panelist. Oh, I got you. You got to change you're to it. Every, you're to everyone. So yeah, you're, you're uh, Rob is just a host and panelist. All right, so put in the chat what's your one word for doing business with the federal government. And we also have we have we have uh, Aubrey says contracts. Par Parviz says bureaucracy and red tape. That's four words, but <laughs> I do believe. Dennis says complex. Yeah. Opportunities. Uh, Tosca says stable. That's a good one from RDG Information Systems. That's awesome. Uh, Andrew says opaque. <laughs> All right. There you go. If anybody, who else got one? Who else? Let's see. Potential. This is coming from who is that? That's Keith says potential. Terrence says complex. Maria says potential. Rob says critical. Critical. Like it. Very good. All right, we'll get, we'll get cooking. We got a lot to cover today, and I don't. I have to. I actually have to be doing stuff um, later today. I have a I have a briefing that we got to do. Where's my controls? I'm running. I'm running remote from Yellowstone, West Yellowstone. So if I do so something cool. stupid, you should have worn the hat though. You got. You, you needed a cowboy hat. That that's true. I I actually put on a cowboy hat the other day, Rafa, and never before I've been able to rock it. But with this beard and a gray look, that's it. I'm doing the Yellowstone thing, and I think I can actually do it now. I think do it. Can. Do it. I can do it. Do it. I can do it. All right. So we're in Q4. This is why, where we are, Q4. Believe it or not, that started just that was that was 11 days ago that started. Wow. And as of that, as of the first, 800 billion dollars was spent. 900 billion is left. There's a lot of money still left. What happens in September, Rafael Marrero? It's use it or lose it time. The fiscal yeah. federal year ends. You got that right. You got that right. Let me see if I can make this work. All right. So here's what we know. This is crazy of what's happening out in the marketplace. 75% of the market is only one response. We've never seen this before. And only 1.15% is showing up on Sam.gov. I'm going to be talking about that later today. So uh, where am I? I need to go back up here and see what's happening here. I need to do this this way i got it here we go here we go sorry 75 percent. i knew there was a 75 percent in there uh hmm. so there you go so what not 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 everything hits there and my question to you is did you know did you know that only 98 only two percent hits and 98 percent does not hit sam.gov did you know that and maybe that is a yes, because you've been seeing some of our marketing from Sam Radar, right, Rob mm -hmm. Blonholm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, or maybe you were missing some. Is anybody even here today? <laughs> there, we go. there we go. I know somebody's. Let's pass, out, let's pass out the Cuban coffee, right? <laughs> there you go. So uh, so there you go. So the, And you might not even believe it. And, and how about the 75%? No idea. Most folks didn't have any idea. And we do have the ability to run a free NAICS report. In fact, Rob can show you where to do that. Rob can paste that in there to say where you can find that free report on samradar.com. So there you go. You can you can take a look at that. And that's the most, every time we do this, we find folks had no idea about this. And that's the truth, right? A lot of folks don't know, don't know about that. So while we're working on that, let me see. I'm still trying to figure these controls out. I'm going to introduce you some of the team. We got the doctor, the good doctor, Rafael Marrero, he help us with capability statements and briefings and videos, websites. This is all federal stuff, right? And state. You also work in the state market, right? Private sector for industry and state, local, and federal, right? Anything that's related to contractor marketing. That's our that's our lane, right? We're we're the best at it. That's what we do. That's what the and they are the best at it. That's why I send everybody to him. And if you're if you get your capability, somebody says, Hey, what the heck is a capability? You probably need to talk to Rafa. Boom. Mm -hmm. So, and you, you also do your videos, capabilities, videos, and capabilities briefings. We love to present with those. We also have Greg Clark. Greg, you were in here last month, were you? 
Yeah, you, I was here last month. You were month. here last month? It was the month, the month, it was May I was not here. It was May that you were in France. <laughs> <laughs> he was in France. He yells with the proposal. <laughs> right. So Greg has over two, how many billion you got? We passed two billion in contract awards two years yeah. ago. Two oh, years ago. So a little more than 400 federal contracts with a combined value in excess of two billion. And then another, um, and as far as GSA schedule support, we've helped more than 450 companies get on the GSA schedule. Love it, man. Everything else we do is in support of those two areas. Numbers matter. You know, you know why? Who ended that poll? Did I end that? Somebody did. All right. Well, there you go. Well, the poll is ended. <laughs> I say I don't uh, <laughs> so I don't know. If, I don't know if that is right or not. Sally's not with us. She's where's Sally? It's Peter Timbis. He's out of a conference in, uh, in Arizona. Arizona. No, yeah. she's here. She's in the chat. I'm here. I'm here. Allow me to show my video. Oh, I came in. I oh my out. gosh. I didn't realize you were here. I thought That's you were. Okay. I thought you were abandoning us today. Here. I was going to bust I'll on you. I never abandon you. <laughs> you have right, to allow me go. to show my video. There you go. You can now show your video. Hi. Hey, there she hey, is. Sally. Oh, so we missed you, Dave. Everybody was, uh, Rob's been doing a great job, but we missed you. And uh, so happy to be here. I'm actually at a cybersecurity IT conference. So many new things. I mean, I learned that. Did you know, Dave, you could like, if you left a message for your wife and kids going, hi, I've been kidnapped, help, help. It, somebody could fish your voice and it would sound exactly like you. And so the oh, kids yeah. have a safe word, Dave. And your safe word is Sam Radar. <laughs> So you tell everybody in the world my safe word. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That makes it That's not work. That's not Nobody work. will ever hack that, Sally. Oops, oops. <laughs> hey, you need awesome. a new one. So, all right, we'll make sure we keep you in the, in the loop in this. We also have Peter Timmons in the house. And sometimes we only see from his, like the bottom of his chin. So he needs to tilt. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, a booster show chair. The guy booster used to chair. look over the fence. Oh, the right. show. Well, the guy just looked over the fence. <laughs> that's right. That's Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. Wilson. Yes. yes. So there you go. Peter helps folks uh, with with uh, contract lending. He just let us know there's a bunch of stuff that's happening right now. So uh, you also help pre pre award, right? You can help. What is that called when you give them a letter? What? It's absolutely huge for clients. Letters of financial support, mm -hmm. which will state to your client. That should they award the contract to you, we will be there to financially support you. Well, so whatever revenue you're at, whether you're at zero revenues or 50 million of revenues, we can help you your company grow. And mm -hmm. once a client is on board with us, it's access to capital. You'll never have to worry about capital ever again. I love that, man. I want to jump having... in. I want to jump in here real quick and say uh, Peter is currently helping one of my clients who got denied for an 8A because the SBA thinks that he doesn't have potential for success. The financials were a little off last year, but Peter comes in with the save uh, letter of financial support and we're on our way to approval. There we go. Love that. Peter. Speaking of you, she's now married. This is, um, I just redid this from last month. I kept it up there just for, <laughs> just for you, Irene. Thank you. And, I, and, and with GPS, Government Procurement Solutions, you help. In, in multiple facets, but what is your main lane? You help folks with something, with, some kind of certifications or something. Yes, socioeconomic certifications. We do SBA certification, state, county, local, any certification that is out there, you name it, we can do it. And uh, it significantly boosts your chances of getting a government contract, not to mention opportunities to set aside that no one else has other than certified okay. firms. You gotta love that. And, and let me tell you something, when you get closer to September 30th, that gets more and more important, doesn't it, Irene? Absolutely. Hey, so, Mary, can you put your info in the chat after yesterday? I, um, a lot of people were asking me how to reach you. So your info. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very popular. Done. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Sally. And I don't think Brian Hevel is going to make it with us today. He is, is retired from um, from CMS. Obviously, you can see he's he's he wrote a book. He's writing another book. We're, we're actually collaborating on that one. So that'll be an interesting thing as, as that comes out. Talking about CPARs. So if you need any... If you talk about somebody who really understands the FAR and CPARs, that is acquisitionhelp.com. If you need some help, you can check him out there. I am Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about us today with uh, data marketing. Sam Radar's, if you look up top there, Sam Radar's is our thing. And today I'm doing a sam.gov tutorial on, on um, 
on finding opportunities. So if you're interested in that, you can go to govbrief.us and you can sign up for that today. Uh, and that's why I'm not going to be doing the SAM radar thing after today because uh, I don't have time. So there you go. But I'll tell you a little bit about ISI Federal. On the right-hand side, you can see some of the things we do. Uh, market essentials is, is certainly a big deal right now, finding buyers in your space. In fact, that's one of the questions from one of our folks. But GovBrief is, is something that we do to push out to the market. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, and we do that for industry. We'll push out to industry with folks like Greg and Tricia and, and Rafa. So we got to get you on there, Irene, too. We got to do one for you. Uh, but we're also going to be doing a call for experts and panelists who want to reach out to the feds. Uh, most of this is going to happen in October. Uh, but if you need to do anything now, right right now, you, you got to get on board if you want to do anything for for reaching out to the to the gubbies. So on the right hand side, you also see uh, Sam Radar is a game changer that you're going to hear a little bit about that today from different folks that are using it. Um, all I can say is it is nothing else like it on the market and it helps you compete for the 98 percent that is not available on Sam.gov. Just doesn't show up. And you can even hear this cat right here, Steve. Uh, Steve from Dirt, uh, he was talking about uh, about looking for this for years. He was using another system. You can go check that out. I'm not going to say who it is, but you can sign up for seven days for free. And one word for the federal government. Who else has got anything else they want to pop into chat? For the one word, let's see. Anybody else got a last minute one in there? For one word, we had a lot of confusings. And <laughs> Rafa says, what, do you, what is that? I don't even read that. Right. That's Mexican for that's Mexican slang for lots of money. Mucha, mucha lana, mucha, mucha lana, mucha lana. That shows you how much Spanish I know, there, buddy. <laughs> I know not any Spanish. Any other? Anybody else got anything they want to pop in for their one word for for doing business with the federal government? Because uh, we we could. There's a lot that are happening there. And if you want to participate, we love participation. Uh, we will share links and docs. Tamara says hard. You're right. If it was easy, everybody would be able to do it, right, Tamara? And most people can. If you have questions, you can raise your hand. We love the engagement. If you'd like to in, engage, you can pop something in the Q&A. And a quick disclaimer, for the industry folks, it's not affiliated or endorsed by any agency. It's for informational purposes and only, and it doesn't guarantee an award. How about that? And for Govies, if you're in the government, we'd love to have you here, and you can participate with us as well. And it's not an endorsement to purchase from anybody that is here. Uh, Jeff says, confusing as hell. Love that. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to connect you with experts. We'll be discussing what works and highlighting sponsors and partners like the folks like SamRadar.com because we can't do this alone. I can't do this without Rafa or Irene or Greg. You know why? Because I hate paperwork. And that's why I love these folks. And, um, and we can't do it alone. So uh, let's talk about why you guys are here today. Let me find this one. I'm here because you're new to federal contracting. You have federal contracts as a sub. Were you one of the 116,501 primes that won last year? Or some nut sent you an email. Somebody's got to be. You can choose as many as you want, but somebody's got to be a Weisenheimer, Sally White, and choose that, that last I one. Remember. I'm certain of it. <laughs> so, uh, so we will have session handouts that are going to come later because I don't have them right now, but we're, it'll give you the stuff that you that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, Rob, if you can go grab those from um, from Araya for me, and make sure we get in there. So the one word, we have a lot of those uh, that we already talked about. So a lot of folks said this, this will be the best <clears throat> webinar ever if you, your, you and your team can provide a way forward to win a federal contract. We have all been involved in those. Uh, from Deborah from Green Rush, a funding opportunity is discussed. We can discuss that anytime with Peter Timbus because he's the funding opportunity specialist. And John from that get list get shortlisted for 2023. We actually have that as one of the questions today from from somebody. Uh, and let's see, let's see, deep water point. I learned something new after 40 years in the business. Mark, how to speak with buyers. Love that. And and Stu Pryor. Stu from Prior Solutions. If the presenter presents a platform with proven results, there it is right there, Sam Raynard. That's why we're here. You can schedule your demo with Rob Lundholm. He is here as well. And now let's see who, let, we're going to find out who they want to reach. But first, we're in this poll. Let's see where we are, ladies and gentlemen. 63% are new. Love that. 8% have a federal contract as a sub, and they want a prime. 
And the, or we have 17% that were primes and a lot of people think I'm a nut. Imagine that. We have a bunch of folks that are new as well. 75% are new. F fantastic. Appreciate that, guys. So the next poll I have is who do you want to reach? Because this is, this is important as we start our conversation today. And we're going to get to the hot seat questions in just a minute, I promise. And that is going to be who you want to reach. The contracting officers, program managers, or if you don't have any idea what we're talking about, stick around and we'll show you what we're talking about. Let me see if I can make this work. So here are the hot seat questions. One comes from Maria, who is, is who is who's your HR? Are there requirements for registry with the federal government that will support a short list? Woo, great question. Um, Car Car Carola, Carola, I think that's how you say it, um, from Direct Mail Solutions. How can I find buyers in my market? Roger from Axiom says, speak about the fiscal year end opportunities in marketing. We will do exactly that. So hot seat number qu question number one is, from Maria, from Who's Your HR, are there requirements for registry with the federal government that will support a short list? Greg Clark, let's talk about a short list that you help people get on. How, what's one of the short lists that, that you can be on? The if GSA you have schedule? a certain type, of, certain type of contract. The GSA schedule would be a short list. That would be a short list. If you so, consider 18,000 short. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's better than nobody, right? Yeah, that's so, yeah. So tell us, it's a it's a mechanism. Go ahead. And so, one of the unique things about a GSA schedule, though, is that a contracting officer can choose just a few GSA schedule holders because all the pricing is already pre-approved, right? Isn't that how that works? Yeah. The point the point of the GSA schedule isn't for us to make a lot of money. That's not why it was developed. It was so that the federal government uh, can purchase the products and services they need quicker uh, and less expensively from pre-vetted contractors and pre-negotiating. So if an agent wants to buy from you, that's a- uh, Are you, is, that there, is he breaking up on everybody else? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's breaking yeah. up it. So you're breaking up, Greg. I'm in Yellowstone and I got better coverage than you here, buddy. I, is this better? Yeah, go ahead. Try it. Okay. So if an agency knows, knows something they need to buy, they can choose to go to the GSA schedule and find these, the, 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 these pre-vetted companies. And um, they can choose to put out a solicitation to everybody on that category that sells that, or they can choose to do to send it just to the 10 in their state or the three in their town, or just the one company that's a known entity with them that does a really good job of providing those services. You're right. So the short list, and that's one of the questions Mike Corbyn said, what is a short list? Pre-qualified suppliers? In one instance, if it's a GSA contract, that's exactly what it is, pre-qualified, right? You're pre-qualified to be able to sell at this price. Yeah, now, I think the probably the, the best short list to be on is the list of contractors that the buyer knows. Bingo. And that's at each individual buyer level. There isn't a master short list unless you get a blanket purchase agreement or an IDIQ, right? That's another way to have a shortlisted group of suppliers. But the real way that we want, we all want, and what we've used forever is you want to be in front of those people. Because like you said, Greg, there's 18,000 GSA schedules, right? Something like that. Something like that. And if you're in IT, there's at least 4,000 IT that, that, that cover ITs, right? So- here in this instance, I love that. So when 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 you were a buyer, Raphael, mm -hmm. you just love to go out to everybody every time, right? You would never go to anybody that you knew. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't. I've only <laughs> I would only resort to those that had already been properly vetted by my supply chain organization, right? That had been vetted in terms of their fiscal, their financial health, financial stress index, past performance. Uh, what what their white space is? Can they can they cover certain spaces? Can they deliver on time, on budget? Do they have a good PMO? Do they have policies and procedures? All of these things that are present in a capabilities maturity model, right? Those are the people that were on my short list and the people that I would call to rely on them to deliver products and services needed by my internal clients in the Fortune 500 and also in government contracting. So, so. But once you found them, 
Yes. You would use them over and over and over again. Absolutely. 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 Because they're tried, they're true, tried and tested, right? People do business with everyone they know, like, and trust. I'm not going to, we have a fear of the unknown and the government is very, very risk averse, right? Yep. So, well, certifications are another great way to get vetted because the SBA, hey, hey. the federal government, will hey, also uh, do their due diligence. I mean, it's a very rigorous process to get certified, and they're going to take a look at all your business financials and make sure that you're solid and that you can do the job as a government contractor. So you get their seal of approval, like, yes, this person can do the job, and that will significantly increase your chances because now you're trusted. And mm -hmm. also, they can choose two woman-owned or two hub zone choice of two has been out there. You can also sole source to them now. Don't have it a absolutely. lot, right, Irene? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when you can get contracts that are set asides and that are specifically for these people, and those are technically short lists. For example, hub zone is a really hard one to get because most people are not in a hub zone. So that's a very short list, and that'll significantly improve. And they are, they're also, there isn't an agency out there that I know of that meets their obligations for hub zone either so nope. that's a great that's a great place as Absolutely. well so that's awesome and and so i just just with what i've done in the hit in in the past it's always been about getting on the buyer shortlist mm -hmm. each individual buyer shortlist there's that is no easy task so that's why you need to be targeting the right people and make sure that you're generating uh generating your um relationships because i don't care what anybody says people still buy from people they like don't they peter timbis absolutely 100 percent of the time 100 percent of the time so the question that i have now is do you get paid for researching buyers and most of us don't get paid for researching anything we get paid when we sell something so that's the question and if you need some some help on that i'm telling you what if you're if you make more than twenty two dollars an hour or want to make more than twenty two dollars an hour, then you definitely want to check out what is the software package we are talking about, Sally White. <laughs> is she paying attention to me? I am paying attention. We're talking Good. about Sam Radar. We're talking about LinkedIn. We're talking about ways to reach out and understand who is in your buyer persona, your contract managers, or program managers, et cetera. That's right. So Mark if, you if, you, if you want to make more than $22 an hour, sign up for Sam Radar, and you will absolutely be making more than that, just like that. A super quick story. Yeah. <clears throat> so Peter Timbus um, basically discovered someone from that. He's been on this meeting for quite some time. <clears throat> he discovered someone after doing some digital marketing. Um, someone came into his pack that is a $2 billion opportunity just two weeks ago. And so there's a whole sequence. You have to know who you're connecting with. And that's where Dave and the team at Sam Radar help. Then once you know who you're connecting with, you can make sure your website is branded. That's where Dr. Moraro and his team helps. Then you can reach out on LinkedIn and other platforms, which often are free. So you're out there connecting with executives. And then you can do a digital marketing campaigns where you're, where you're reaching people. And so, I mean, a $2 billion opportunity, it just blew me away. But it starts with knowing who you're talking to, which is here. And that's a fact. Because guess what? Every just about everything is shortlisted. Just letting everybody know, eighty-five percent, eighty-five percent have five or fewer respondents, and that's when I learned that back in in two thousand and nine. It changed everything that I did. So let's talk about the stakeholders because if we're talking about reaching these people, um, and researching these people, we need to know what they do, right? So uh, I'm gonna end this poll in three, two, one, and boom. There you go. All right. So with this, there's four, there's actually five. There, you also have end users, right? But your contracting officers and specialists, they handle the money side. Uh, program people are, are getting the work done. You have contracting officer representatives. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then senior management. So let's talk about how this happens, right? You have your political appointees, and then your senior executive service. And underneath of them is where everything breaks out into the in, into like a separation of church and state here. These people care about getting the job done. The program managers, procurement, care about it, getting the contract done. Really, really important. Anybody that's new here, make sure that you know you're going to be pitching two different people in your environment. These guys on the program side have a need and they throw it over the fence to procurement. Because why? Because procurement can't spend the money, can they, Rafael Marrero? 
But yeah. program people can't spend the money, right? No, no, they can't. They can only make recommendations in terms of a vendor that's doing a good job, uh, but uh, they cannot award business. That's a conflict of interest, right? They are the doers, the users, the end users, right? The clients correct. of the procurement function in government. That's exactly right. And that's why you have vehicles, right? The mm -hmm. procurement people have vehicles like a GSA contract, right? Mm -hmm. Greg Clark? That's exactly what it is. And they care about socioeconomic set-asides and, and certifications, right, Irene? Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are the people that care about that. This is why we built the Winnable Opportunity Matrix, and that's going to get popped in there at some point, I promise. But this is the program people. Program people throw it over the fence to the contracting officer, and the contracting officer, from there, you have a legitimate opportunity. It has to be funded. If it ain't funded, it ain't real. It could be on a forecast and not funded. But once it once they're engaged in this process, you have an opportunity that you can bid on or even just have a direct award on, which is what we want as much as we can get, right? So all this results in an award, which is exactly why we built SAM Radar. Because if you look at this, this is actually an award that was awarded. And guess what happens? The amount is listed here. It's done by NACE codes, by PSCs, by keywords. And here, look at this. The number of offers received is what? One for how much? $2.2 million. We see this every day. This is one of the 98% that doesn't hit the street. And, and exactly what we're talking about here, where 75% doesn't have any competition at all. And that's why you've got to be looking at the market differently if you want to play it. All right. So hot seat question number two comes from Corolla from Direct Mail Solutions. How can I find buyers in my market? Who wants to take a stab at that? I will, I will. All right, Sally White, go ahead. So basically the first thing you have to understand is your target market. So what is the target market that has the highest likely of purchasing your superpowers, your products or services? Again, Sam Radar, that's one of the ways you find out because you can tell who's buying and what the amounts are. The second thing is your buyer personas. Who in that target market are responsible for influencing, purchasing, making decisions? And once you discover those, you can then go out and do some different campaigns through LinkedIn, conferences where I am, to meet the right individuals, to create those relationships with those people so that you can then share your information and share what you have to offer and how you add value in a well-articulated CAPE statement. Dr. Mar Raphael Marrero will help you with that, um, et cetera. Yeah, so so let's talk. I'm going to talk about this a little bit because this is where I live, right? Greg Clark, everybody keeps saying, make sure you're telling people what you do. Greg, Greg's always on me, and I still owe you that freaking article. I know it. I know hmm. it. I know it. It's, it's, it's three. It. It's three bullets, not three. an article. Oh, three. That's all I need is three bullets. That's okay, all I, need. Three. I, I can break it down for you, Greg. I can break it down for you. There you go. Get it from getting up from Rafa. <laughs> so. This is exactly the reason that I got into this back in 2009. Somebody introduced me to fpds.gov. And that's where I saw the separation between buyers on, on, on sam.gov, which was used to be FBO, right? Federal Biz, Fed Biz Ops, and, and what happens on FPDS. And the data just got me to a place to say, all right, show me who is really, really playing in our space. You mentioned it, Sally. Who is actually buying in our space? And we can do that with NACE codes, with PSCs, keywords. My favorite is actually my competition. If they're, if my competition is playing in the space, then I know for a fact that that buyer could be buying from me. And that's the difference in the philosophy and in, in what you want to be doing in this marketplace is you want to be finding those buyers. And, and exactly that. You can find them on SAM.gov. Sometimes you can find them at PDS. Um, obviously you can find them in places like Sam radar, which is where, which is where we live. And I, I'll show you a little bit of that. Maybe again, is that right there? Yeah. So you can do this by names and keywords. Same thing I showed you just a minute ago, right? With the, with the award, but right here, you have the buyer contact information right here. And you know that, what is that? How does that Kim Kamisha? Is that how you, is that? I can't see it because it's so small on mine. Kamisha. Yeah, I think it's Kamisha. Kamisha. And this is a legit, this is with NIH, right? And she's operating in, in the NAICS code for administrative management and general management consulting services. That's legit. And then what we want to do is we just want to engage Kamisha. If we're not engaging Kamisha, we can't be on her short list because she doesn't know who we are. 
And that's exactly what that's about once more. So Peter, how do you help people with a, with a short list piece? Because a lot of times you're doing business with a, with a segment of, of, um, of socioeconomic set-asides that they can be awarded a sole source contract, right? You do a lot of work with 8As, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. We, we come in with our financial letter of support. I'll give you a specific example that I'm working on this week is I have a company that's got a million dollars, did a million dollars in revenue last year, and they have an opportunity with Capital One Bank for 30 million. There's wow. three people, there are three companies that are going to be bidding on this. He happens to be a service disabled <coughs> veteran owned company. So he's got a leg up in the process. Well, typically if he's got a million dollar company, he can't go to traditional financing and get the type of line of credit that he's going to need. So we're in the process of issuing him a financial support letter that's going to go into his package this Friday 14th. Without us, he would have no opportunity to win that award. So when I talk about lending to the opportunity, this is a precise example of how we can take your company, whether you've got 500,000 of revenue, a million, 50 million, but we're gonna lend to that opportunity where the traditional banking community will not. The whole and that helps. Is, doesn't yeah. that help with engaging the buyers too? Absolutely, absolutely. So it changes the whole ball game for companies with us. I say to anybody, Hey, when you're with us, your problems about access to capital are over. Whether you're in the government contracting space, commercial space, or any other space, you need access to capital to drive your business. And we believe I it. Couldn't agree more. Hey, Stephanie Hoover has has um, Stephanie, you there? You have your hand raised. And I also want to, I also want to get um stand up so stephanie you there can you unmute your mic stephanie hoover hang on a second stan i'm gonna find you because i think you have a great question too because you found one as well stan you there can you unmute stan sanson sanson stan you there I'm not sure if Stan, but he has a question um is an OTA a procurement contract? What is an OTA? It's an other transaction agreement. An other transaction authority. agreement? Authority, authority, yes. Authority, right? Authority, other, other, and I've heard both. So, so the answer is it can be used as a mechanism to purchase. That's exactly right, Stan. I just answered it in the Q&A. Oh, there you go. That's why it disappeared. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So, Stan, do you have one of those that somebody's asking you to do? He says he doesn't have a microphone. Oh, he doesn't have a microphone. Okay. Or he wrote he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and Rafa, before we jump on to, to the next question, you were in procurement in the past, right? That's, yep. That was your job. That's right. Irene was too, right? You, you, no, you weren't. You were in the program. That wasn't government. my job. I was, I was in the government, but not as a procurement officer. No, you were, you were in program. So it was law enforcement. <laughs> that's right. Yes, yeah, she, she was smacking people around. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, uh, as, as you think about finding buyers, how you used to be a buyer. How did people find you, and then how did they engage you? Are you asking me or? or yeah, I'm asking they... you. I'm okay, asking sorry. You, doctor. It's the sorry. doctor. It's the doctor who's also a colonel. Well, that's right. I don't know if I have it here. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I, he's a Kentucky fried colonel only because <laughs> Cuban. He's a Kentucky fried Cuban because why is that, Rafa? Well, I was, I was uh, commissioned by the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky as a Kentucky colonel and uh, an honorary aide de camp for my uh, involvement in Made in USA and supporting small businesses during the pandemic. So while you're talking, I'll go ahead and make 
make this right. work for and He loves to call me a Kentucky Fried Cuban. <laughs> right. Right. There you go. You're forgetting there the little is. tie, right? I'm going to wear there a tie yeah, to, yeah, the next, yeah. to the next yeah. webinar. I'm wearing the tie, right? There you go. Yeah. All right. So, so when, when people would engage you, could you tell right away where they belonged? Yes, I could tell within the first minute of our <laughs> conversation whether or not my, my supply chain organization had any business dealing with this person. And, and, and a lot of good intent, well-intentioned, uh, uh, you know, nice people came in through the door, right? And they were certified and they were selling me on their, look, the first thing they would do is I'm certified. So in other words, I deserve a spot at the table. And I would say to them, you know, thank you for your service. In the case of the military, that's the first thing, right? Uh, or, or I appreciate where you're coming from. And I know how hard it is to run a small business, but this is the big leagues here, right? We need to know if you can deliver on time, on budget. Do you have a, a sustainable supply chain in place? If you have a good team, I could tell right away if the person had any business doing business with us. That's, that was number one, right? I would look at their capability statement, right? I would ask them, right? Because I would never take a meeting with anyone that did not have a capability statement. Right? You wouldn't take a meeting without a capability. Nope. That was like a non-starter to me because it would tell me that the level of maturity and attention to detail that I need in a vendor is not there. And that means risk. And that means that my internal clients are going to hold me accountable and hold my feet to the fire because my sale, my supply chain organization contracted someone that was not fit for their role, right? They're very specific about their character, about their requirements. So I need someone that can follow the rules, pay attention, and pay attention to detail, right? So if they didn't have a good capability statement, I would not take a meeting. Then I would I, I would look at their, uh, when they came to me, right, assuming that they passed the first hurdle, right, and they got the meeting, the face-to-face, -face, then they would do what's known as a capabilities briefing, right, meeting. <laughs> and typically, these last no more than 15, 20 minutes, right? I mean, on a good day, right? So if you're in your first couple of minutes, you lose someone's attention, you're done. You might as well call it a day, right? You've wasted your time. So go out and grab yourself a nice piece of chicken and salad and, you know, Kentucky go back and take chicken. it home. That's it, some fried chicken, right? right. <laughs> um, you're not going to get anywhere. So that, that, that first meeting is everything. You need to communicate. You need to use the right terms. You need to tell them in a certain number of slides. And before even getting to the meeting, Dave, one of the things that I used to re always request is, Talk to your sponsor, right? Your vendor manager, your uh, your OSDEBU, which is a small business liaison, right? Or Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. The small business person, right? The program person. Send them a copy of your briefing to make sure that our key points are covered, right? I wouldn't meet with them if they were not because, and give that person ownership, right? Get, seek their input to make sure that you're hitting on all the key points, Right. There's a lot there. There's something that's relevant to them, Dave, because I mean, you're not going to talk about world peace or, or geophysics when you're selling nuts and bolts, right? You need to keep it simple. You need to stay on point. You need to stay on brand and you need to rehearse your presentation. So I would look at statements. I would look at briefings. I would always take a look at their website before meeting. And you know what? If they didn't have a website, they weren't going to get a meeting either. Right, and it's in, it's interesting you, may, you mentioned website, and I know we're a little off topic with finding the buyers, but you mentioned the websites. It's really important to have a, a federal landing page, isn't it? Absolutely, you need to have a tab in your website that says government or that has your capabilities and speaks to your delivery of of, of goods and services to the okay. government. Now, how do you find your buyers? Well, they need to align. How do they find me? They need to align with the industries where their products or services are needed. Right. You want, you need to find an un, uh, you know need to find a need right and and fill it right fill it with it. this product that's it right and so Fine. so what, I, there's a lot right there so your buyers need to be number one buyers are buying everything right mm -hmm. they're buying pencils and pens computers and planes so they're not just buying what you sell but you do want to find the yeah. ones that are operating in your market <laughs> and there's NAICS codes right you that's one of the things that's important in your capabilities NAICS and PSCs. Right. Tell people right. what a PSC is, product service code. Tell them what that yeah, is. Product service, yeah, supply code. So if NAICS codes are, are everything, right? On the first page, upper left-hand quadrant of your tax return, there's a six-digit number that your accountant assigns 
sometimes the wrong code, but they assign to your <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Be careful with that too, because that can affect your small business status, right? That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And it will affect your certification. A lot of times yeah. we have to get them to provide a letter from the CPA stating that, hey, we messed up and this isn't the wrong code. You'll be surprised. Like it's way left field. Like some codes are just have nothing to do with the company. So always your make CPA, sure. Your CPA is not an expert in this. Nope. Make sure that no, your code not. is correct on your taxes. So as a, as, a, as, a, as a buyer of these products, right, you need to understand, like I'm talking to the audience now, right, you need to understand what I'm buying. And then by studying the NAICS codes, the North American Industrial Classification System codes that are available on NAICS.com, right, it's the codes that the Census Bureau uses to sort out uh, which primary economic activity you're involved in, right? And then the Department of Commerce and Labor, they take that data, and they parse it out to understand who does what in our economy, right? So understand what I'm buying by the types of codes that I'm buying, right? And using in these transactions. And then underneath the NAICS codes, there's something called PSC, right? So you can have one NAICS code with multiple PSC codes. Absolutely. So always cross-reference and make sure you're tracking this information and map it. I like to do a nice little XY matrix and have... The, the NAICS code and then the different PSCs that fall underneath that so that you align everything so that you do not irritate nor confuse your buyer, right? Because if you're selling something that they don't buy and you're wasting their time, right? And that's that's something you, they don't appreciate. I didn't and, appreciate and I wanna, it. I want to piggyback on that real quick, uh, Rafa, because if you, if you take a look at what your competitors are doing, you can find that information on SAM.gov, right, mm -hmm. Irene? Right there. So you can, you can see it right on Sam.gov. You can see the NACE codes and the PSCs they're using. Then on FPDS, you can watch what they're doing and gather the gather the information and do the research to be able to say, these are the buyers that are buying from my competition. Here's the NACE. Here's the PSCs that they're using. It doesn't cost anything to add those to your Sam. Sam registration, right? Rafa, you can add as many as you want. I don't recommend adding a laundry list. I no, recommend no. having the ones that are pertinent to your to your world, right? And Dave, mm -hmm. USAspending.gov actually will even have some more like detailed. It'll have the next code, but then right next to it, it'll even have like the more detailed product that they actually purchased. So you can look at it that way as well. Exactly. So I appreciate that very much. We have a question here from Tanya. It was a, it was a while ago. Sorry, Tanya, just saw it. A very new to GSA world, who would be the best to reach out to for emergency services that are not generally big? That is a great question, Tanya. Uh, that's that mostly controlled by FEMA, but you also have um, Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. Look at how FEMA's uh, done. We actually do briefings on FEMA, so you may want to reach out, Tanya. We'll, we'll make sure we get some information to you about FEMA, as well as... Um, depending on, on what, what you're doing for emergency services, depends on, on where that lands. But yeah, FEMA would be the one that's there. Anybody else want to throw in on that one? So I'd probably schedule a call with Rob, um, with Dave's organization, and look at have him look up some <clears throat> opportunities in SAM Radar, and he could show you some of those opportunities real time in a Zoom to help you determine some of those things. And then, of course, if you think it's a value, obviously sign up. Correcto. All right, so hot seat question number three, Roger from Axiom. Speak about end of fiscal year opportunities and marketing. Boy, oh boy, is there a big deal coming down the pipe? Why is that? Why is that, Rafael Marrero? What They're happens in fiscal year? And eight hundred billion dollars by September thirtieth, and it's use it or lose it time, right? Right, we're in the throes of the harvest season right now, so you got to get busy. They will buy some very random things just to meet that budget. <laughs> That, that is so true. And Greg, Greg Clark, this is from your last, sorry, man, you're still in France. Um, you do a lot of work. This, from here on out through the end of September, you do a lot of work. Because so what, yeah, when, when, when Raphael says you got you to get busy, what, you know, what does that mean? Well, it means if you have or have had government contracts, you're going to sort those, those contracting people or, or program people by who your best relationship is down and start talking to all of them and you're and when you talk to them you're like we're, we're in the final quarter um are there any areas that i can help with to get uh, to get some contracts awarded because that's what they need to do 
talk to them about how you can help them. What can you do to help them? Um, don't talk about, can I have a contract? You know, what can I do to help? Do you have any of these areas that you're looking to fulfill? And just go through that list. And, and as soon as you get to the bottom of the list, go back to the top and start all over again. Every week until until the end of the year's up, I, I would. I couldn't agree more. So reaching out to people you've already done business with or at least talk to about doing business with, right? Or you talk to, yeah, yeah. And one of the, I'll tell you one thing, one of the things that we do is we point people to GovBrief for, you can actually pitch the government and then you have a captive audience. We're doing one uh, tomorrow on lubricants, uh, green lubricants, right? For replacing the, the toxic. Did you know that WD-40 is actually toxic? Just saying. I didn't know that till we did the briefing. Uh, but yeah, if you can, if you have something that you want people to know about, we do this on a regular basis. We It's running out of time. You're running out of people because to, to, at 817, the last one, because they're not going to show up because they're going crazy at the end of fiscal year with RFPs, which is what you do, Greg, is you help respond to RFPs. And there's going to be thousands and thousands of them almost in everybody's mm -hmm. market between and now the, and the September 30th. The turnaround times are going to get shorter and shorter. Um, I keep talking about the one from uh, from two years ago that was issued Saturday morning and due Monday morning, or issued Saturday night and due Monday morning. We had one that was issued on Sunday morning that was due on Monday morning. <clears throat> Twenty four hour turnaround. It's crazy. Hour. It's crazy, and you and that's what's going to happen. And so, in getting in getting out, I do want to talk about the ability to market capability statements. Your capability statements is your business resume, right? Mm -hmm. And pushing right. that out and in addition with your socioeconomic status, right? So you push it out. And what do you do, Ralph? You send them a, a, an email that's 18 pages long and has 15 attachments on it so that they review everything because you show you want to show them everything that you do all in one email, right, Rafa? This is me deleting that file. Boom. <laughs> right. So here's what happens, right? What you need to do is you need to get on your DSBS profile, which now has the dynamic small business search, which is owned by the SBA, right? It's like their own little internal database of, of vendors that are pre-qualified and registered in SAM, right? It's a pre-qualified vendors list is what your profile is, right? It doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get contracts, but you cannot play the game unless you're registered number one and approved. That's for number sure. two, it's a great place to start the conversation, right? So there's a field now where you can link your DSPS profile, your capability statement link, which wow. will track to your which will track to your website, right? Where your capability statement is. Now, before Dave, what I used to my tactic before they even thought of that was I used to put the URL to your government capability section in the website. This is what I've been doing for years. So I wouldn't have their website per se but where they needed to land on the contractor's website, right? To look at their government stuff, where it was all served, right? It was all right there. Make it easy for your client to do business with you, right? That's, a That's the notion behind it. So right now, you should be looking at, how do I optimize my SAM and DSBS? That's Irene. And number two, how do I get a very powerful, effective, professional, high-impact, custom design, custom written capability statement, right? That hits, that, that fires on all 12 cylinders, right? To get the best impression. Your yep. first, you know, first impression is the most important one. How do I get that? You contact us and we can help you with that. We deliver, yeah. our Kung Fu is strong in this arena, right? Yeah, your Kung Fu is very strong. Your Kentucky fried Kung Fu. <laughs> So, um, and I will say this is that we, we've had a bunch of clients that came back to us to say, we want to do a capabilities blitz this year in Q4. We, we haven't been doing a lot of these <clears throat> because we've been transitioning systems, but we are doing this for, for people where we can do uh, from a few hundred to thousands of buyers. We, we have 77,000 active buyers and we can parse those and we can send it from your domain and we send it out. You guys engage with the buyers. Um, my recommendation, no matter what you do, is keep it short, keep it sweet. Have mm -hmm. at this point, you can do three bullet points. By the time you get to September, you want them to remember one thing about you. That's it. 
and and you want to you want to if you're if you're connecting with those people and i like to dice them by cap our capabilities by the next codes that we're pitching out and making sure that we're hitting people within those next codes so uh, irene you got anything else you want to throw in on that as a as a concept for for q uh, q4 marketing in september yeah i just want to say you know um reach out to them however as the the closer that we get to the end, um, the less attention they're going to be paying because they're going to be, it, it's go time, it's go time. So if you do miss Q4, the next best time to contact them would be around mid-November, forget about December because you're on vacation mode, and then we've got mid-January and so on and so forth. So those yep. would be the best times because the rest of the time they're checked out. But you do want to get in there before then because the last two weeks, for example, like I said before, the Bureau of Prisons, um, the week before the end of the quarter, they bought 500 typewriters and they're sitting in a storage room just because they wanted to, to meet the budget. 500 typewriters. So at the end is when they're going to be looking at all those proposals that you've sent at anybody that they can contact, say, okay, we need to buy this. Um, here's this person. And that's where the GSA schedule comes in. And I always say to folks too, is that, hey, market, do it not, Never, never wait to market. I think, Greg, you have one of the best quotes. I've used your quote multiple times. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And the second best day is? Today. Today. You got to be out there. And, get, and, and even if you don't win anything this fiscal year, it's going to happen again and again and again. And it doesn't matter whether Republicans or Democrats get in blue or red left right doesn't matter they're going to spend the money so you want to get in there and it isn't easy to do which is why we have folks like irene and and rafa and greg and sally and peter and, and others that we know if we don't do it we know people that do so we love we love to to help you do that and so the next question i have is we're going to get you out of here in just a minute i promise <clears throat> do you want a piece of the 98% that doesn't hit sam.gov, everybody should be clicking yes. Yes. And while after doing that, this, Mike has a question. Sorry, oh, after that, okay. there's a question in the chat. Just after, while you're talking about that. All right. Let's see. Capability statement seems critical. What if a company contracts with some of you folks and it's determined that the organization is not capable? What is the best practice to work towards capability? So, Mike, you're in business and you do something right. You wouldn't be in business if you didn't do something right. So it's a matter of taking what you do right and encapsulate that in a capability statement. What do you think, Rafa? Is that good? Yeah, that, that's a good starting point, but there, you need to capture the six C's. There's a great article about it on my blog post on LinkedIn. I'll share it here. There's six essential elements of information that you need to capture in this two-page format, right? You need to have your contacts, your contracts, your contact information, your capabilities narrative, uh, you need to have your codes, right? Um, competencies, differentiators, certifications, right? You need to carry this information on there so that you can deliver exactly what the buyers are looking for. If you need more help, you can you can set up a free 15-minute consultation with us. I'm going to drop my free. information here in the chat. That was free. My favorite four-letter word. That's it. <laughs> right. Six C's is perfect. You're right. That, Mike, wait till you hear what he talks about the six C's. We don't have time to do it now, it's Rafa. Fire. It's fire. Yeah, it's it good. is absolutely fantastic. I've done a lot of presentations with, with you, Rafa, and I love I, that's my that's my favorite. All right. So it's Q4. Tom is running out to build relationships for this Q, this, this Q, but it's not time is not running out to really build relationships. So, but the most thing important thing to now is if you want anything this fiscal year, get moving. The other part is managing your expectations because it is not going to happen overnight, most likely. Even if you get something this fiscal year and you just started, fantastic. Count that as luck. Did everybody hear me? Count that as freaking luck. And, and just know that it's going to take 18 to 24 months, sometimes even longer than that, for you to get traction in the federal space. Don't get discouraged. And make make sure you, can, you 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 persevere. But looking and acting like you belong, they will know immediately if you belong. Immediately, they're going to look at your capability statements. These guys are morons. They don't understand my world, and they're going to throw you out. They may not. They may say nice things like, "I'm going to have your like Irene would say this. I'm sure you've said this. I will keep your capability statement on hand. On hand. 
Yeah, that makes you sound like. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get in touch with you. We'll, in touch. we'll get in touch with you. Don't call <laughs> us. We'll call you, right? That's it. If so, unless you're selling phone, typewriters, then I'll call you, apparently. If your phone doesn't ring, you know it's us. <laughs> That's funny, Sally. Thank you. That was good. That was good. All right. So, but definitely you just, you got to be persistent and you got to persevere. It's not going to happen overnight. All right. So upcoming, we do have unsolicited that we just did that one. We're going to have some more. We got Sam.gov tutorial today. We have PDS, I think next week. Soul source, simplified acquisition, a whole bunch of other things. You can find that on govbrief.us. And I'm not even going to put the rest of that out. I'm just going to say, see you guys next month because I'm getting us out of here on time. Number one and number two. Um, if you want to join me um, for today on uh, for the Sam.gov tutorial, a any last comments for folks for for the end of fiscal year? Back, by the time we get this next time, we'll be down to the last less than sixty days. Sam radar it. Sam radar. Sam radar, it. baby. Hit Sam like just do it. Sam radar it. Just do it. <laughs> Speaking of that, did you ever? Did you guys see the movie Air? Did you guys watch it? Was it was fabulous. It was oh, incredible. Freaking awesome. The best. Yeah. So I, there you go. So everybody have a great month. Well, uh, if you need anything from anybody, you can reach out to me or any of the folks that you saw and we'll make sure we get the, um, the handouts to everybody. Cause I didn't get those for everybody. So Sam radar it from Rob Lundholm. Appreciate that. All right, guys, have a great week. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Peter. Good. Great job. Thank you, Thank Greg. You. Thank you, Dr. Rafa. Take care. Thank you. Right. See you guys.